pH, GH and KH. The most basic water parameters in fish keeping hobby. But what do they mean exactly? Should you really measure them? And if yes, how? Well, let's find out. This is my simple summary of very basic water chemistry for your fish tank. We're gonna start from pH. So pH stands for power of hydrogen and it measures amount of hydrogen ions inside any liquid. So in other words, it tells you if your water is more acidic or basic. In our hobby, vast majority of fish are happy in pH between 6.5 to 8. Of course, it strongly depends on the species of the fish that you keep. So if your fish is from South America, there is a good chance that it prefers lower pH, even lower than 6.5 and fish from Africa tend to like higher pH, even above 8. But in general, the range of pH that fish tolerate is actually quite high. And the most important fact about pH is to keep it stable. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it should be stable. If you suddenly notice that your fish behave strangely, then it might be a sign that your pH changed dramatically and you should test your water. To test pH in your water you have basically three options. Let me start from the fastest one, which is with that kind of device. This is electronic meter for pH. So to measure your pH you have to put the end of this device into your tank and wait for a few seconds. You can see that the number is starting to show, but it's quite unstable at the very beginning, so you have to wait a few seconds until the number stabilizes. So in my case, it stopped at 6.8. So as you can see, it's very fast, very easy to measure this and it works. Next method would be to use those kind of testing stripes. Those stripes can measure more things at the same time. So what you have to do is put this stripe for two seconds inside your tank and then you have to wait for one minute. And after one minute, you should compare the colors on the stripe with the colors on the packaging. But this method also has some problems. First of all, you can see that the jumps between numbers are quite high. So this is kind of a big range in between that you are not able to measure. It's not crazy precise. So if you want to be very precise with your numbers, you won't be able to do this with this test. So how I use those stripes is to do very quick and dirty measurements. But if some of the parameters looks to be out of range, then I bring the more precise methods, like drop tests. So drop test is the third and final method that I will show you. So what you have to do is take 5 milliliters of water, put it into the one of those containers, then take again 5 millimeters of water, put 4 drops of the measuring liquid inside, and put both of them in this special box and then wait for 60 seconds. Now all you have to do is find the proper colors on your measuring chart. So you put the box like this and look on them from the top. If the colors in both containers are the same, the box will show you exactly the pH that you have. So in our case, in this test, we have 6.8. So basically exactly the same as this electrical device, which makes sense because I made those tests one by one. So you know how to measure it, but what if you want to change it? I mean, in general, it's quite rare that you have to adjust your pH if you're keeping very common fish. But in some cases, especially for breeding, you would like to adjust your pH. So if you want to change your pH up, you can use a crushed coral for your substrate or mix it with the substrate. You can use some rocks that are rich in calcium. And finally, you can increase aeration of your tank because this will let carbon dioxide to escape and therefore higher your pH. But if you want to go the other way, so lower your pH, the most obvious solution would be to use CO2. This is by far the most effective method. You can add some wood because many types of driftwood will also lower your pH. 
And finally you can use some chemicals, but this is something that I don't recommend for the beginners. Okay, let's move on to the next parameter, which would be KH. So KH stands for carbonate hardness and it measures the amount of carbonates and bicarbonates in water. And KH is very strongly connected to pH. So KH is able to neutralize acids that come into the water, because it acts like a security system for our pH levels. So high KH makes the pH levels more stable. So we measure KH in degrees, and typically for our tanks it should be between 4 and 8. And again, this is also highly dependent on the species of your fish. To measure KH we can use very similar methods as before. So let's quickly start with those measuring stripes. Unfortunately this time the problems with accuracy are even higher. Not only because you have big jumps in the numbers, uh, let's have a look. You can have 6, 10 and 15, which are quite significant jumps. And to make things even worse, comparison of 6 and 10 is crazy to me. For me, those colors look almost exactly the same. So those stripes are good to check if the KH is really out of range and nothing more. So if you're worried, I would go with drop tests. Luckily, drop tests for KH and GH are easier than pH. Let's have a look. So to check the exact amount of KH in your water, what you have to do is take 5 milliliters of water and put it into the measuring cup. Then you take measuring liquid and start putting drops into this cup. But this time you have to count every single drop. It will start from being blue and then you have to keep counting. One drop is one degree of KH. So to put it simple, when the water changed from blue to yellow, I was at my eighth drop and that means that my KH is eight. So this method is very precise. There is no range, no uncertainty and the colorings are very obvious. To raise your KH you can use again some crushed coral, you can mix it with your substrate, or rocks like dolomites or limestone. But this will also raise the next parameter that we will talk about, which is GH or general hardness. So GH measures the amount of calcium and magnesium ions in the water. Just like KH is measured in degrees and in general for freshwater fish we should keep it between 4 and 12. And again this is very species related. So if someone is asking you how hard or soft your water is, they actually mean GH. Because GH is all about minerals, is especially important for shrimp and snails. Shrimp for molting process, which is very essential for their growth, and snails for their shells. So if you have problems with snails and shrimp, you may want to look into your GH. And high GH can influence hormone levels of your fish, making them much more aggressive. And like with pH, sudden changes of KH and GH can make fish much less resistant to disease. So if you want to measure GH, it looks exactly the same like in case of KH. I don't want to waste your time and repeat everything. Just look into the coloring on the packaging in case of uh, testing stripes. And in case of drop tests, which are far more accurate, we are looking for a change from red to green. So different colors, but the approach is exactly the same. And if you want to increase the GH levels in your tank, you can use some rocks that are very rich in calcium, magnesium or both. So just to summarize, pH, KH and GH all measure specific kinds of ions. They are all important, but fish tolerate quite wide ranges of them. 
and if you keep your water within those ranges without sudden spikes, everything is going to be fine. If this information was useful and you liked the video, please leave a like, it really helps me out. This was just a high level overview of water chemistry, but if you have more questions or more topics that you would like me to discuss, just let me know in the comments. Thank you very much for watching and as always, see you in the next one.